Hi guys, it's Bimerzen with another video. This is part three in the series where I fix a broken Valvetronic spring on my N42 engine. And now it's time to put back the new springs and uh, reassemble the Valvetronic and see if that fixed our issues with rattling. So as you can see, my Valvetronic is now nice and clean. That's because I've cleaned it out and disassembled everything. So if you are interested in this procedure, you can check the video up in the cart or down in the description. So uh, yeah, let's uh, reinstall the new springs and uh, put back the Valvetronic. Just a quick note, when working on the Valvetronic without using the special tools where you can mount the whole bracket in nice horizontal position. Uh, just be careful, don't damage the plastic sensor. If you turn it around, uh, it's very easy to break because over time it is brittle and uh, yeah, you will break the connector and then you'll be in trouble. So just be very careful when handling the whole assembly. Okay, so uh, to install new springs, we just basically have to do the disassembly in reverse. If you need to see that, uh, you can check my other videos in this series. So I am using this uh, six millimeter bolt with the washer and the nut. And this just gives me a fixed point where I can uh, then use my pliers and compress the spring. So uh, yeah, the new springs, they have to be fitted in uh, like this. And then I have my bolt ready and the T30 screwdriver. Now I am going to compress the spring. Make sure that you have a stable grip. And now that the spring is compressed, we should be able to insert the bolt. Okay, now all I have to do is uh, finish tightening the bolt. And the new spring is in. And now we do the same for the rest of the springs.
and now all the springs are in and all we have to do now is torque the bolts to 10 newton meters. Now I'm going to check that all the intermediate levers are nicely aligned so they don't move. Okay. As you can see, this one was a bit out. Okay. I think that this Valvetronic is now ready to be put back into the engine. Before I put back the Valvetronic bracket, I will make sure that all the rocker arms are properly aligned on the valves. If they slip, this will be very, very bad. So uh, I have to make sure that everything looks perfect and uh, nothing is misaligned. Also here at the back, very important. Then I'm going to clean the surfaces. And then I'm going to put fresh oil on the running surfaces. And now we finally put in the whole assembly. First, just uh, try to get it onto the bolts. Make sure that none of the zip ties are in the way. Okay, and also make sure you change the o-rings on these cylinders for the spark plugs because uh, if they start leaking you will have to go through this procedure again to remove the two inner ones because uh, you cannot get to them any other way. So just keep this in mind. Mine were changed a couple of years ago. They still look okay, so uh, I'm not going to replace them. If they start leaking, well, you know, I'm really versed in this engine, so I will just change it someday. So, uh, yeah, make sure that all the spark plug cylinders are nicely aligned. Make sure that they fit straight onto the cylinder head. Everything looks nice. Now I'm going to use a light and again inspect all the rocker arms are nicely aligned and none of the rocker arms were uh, maybe slipped or something like that. Everything looks good, so it's time to put back the nuts. Again, make sure you don't drop any of the nuts in the engine. All the nuts are in. Now I'm going to torque them down to 10 newton meters. So you just uh, start in the center and work towards the outside of the bracket. So you first tighten down the center ones and then the outer ones. Also, if you disassembled the Valvetronic unit and you still haven't torqued the nuts in this row with the shells, uh, do that now and make sure that they are centered. So now I am going to just slowly torque that down. Don't forget to torque down the bolt at the back. This one is easily missed. Okay, all the nuts are torqued and double checked. Now it's time to remove the zip ties and the bolts.
Now we have to put back the oil line. So just slide it back into position and put back the banjo bolt and then torque it down to 10 newton meters. Also torque this one if you've removed it. Then we put back the 10 millimeter bolt on the Valvetronic sensor and then torque it down to 10 newton meters. And also don't forget to put back this retainer spring on the back. So again, I'm using a five millimeter socket and the universal joint. And this does a great job. We are going to take a look at the Venus units. I am suspecting that one of my Venus units is not locking properly. So I'm going to uh, disassemble one of the units and take a look what's going on in there. Maybe find some damage or uh, maybe it's just dirty like this. And then I'm going to put the Venus unit back in the engine and do the timing and see if that uh, fixes my issues. So the first thing to mention is that the Venus units are assembled with five special Torx screws. They have five points. So uh, I had to go ahead and buy a special set of five point security Torx. They are TS uh, from eight to 50. Uh, however, I think they do not uh, fit perfectly because if I take this uh, special bit, it doesn't really fit perfectly on the bolt, but it is, uh, it is fitting good enough so I can remove the bolts and uh, then reassemble the whole unit. This uh, TS torque bit is, uh, let me see, this is the TS30. Okay, so the next problem that we have to solve is uh, how to secure the Venus unit so we can take off the screws. So uh, what I did here is just use two pieces of soft pine wood and just clamped it together in my vise. And this will give me secure grip so I can undo the bolts. I already unscrewed these two bolts, but because the Venus units are not meant to be serviced, uh, there are no torque specifications on the bolts. So what I'm going to do, or I already did, is I've marked on one of the bolts, the position when it's tightened down. Then I am going to unscrew it and then I'm going to try and determine in uh, which torque settings I get back to this marking here. This should give me approximate uh, value for the torque. And uh, yeah, let's do that right now. Okay, so the bolt is unscrewed. Now, I already did some tests and I think that we have to torque back the bolts to 10 newton meters. So I have my torque wrench set to 10 newton meters. So if I try to torque it back, I can see that it goes right back to the mark. So I think that 10 newton meters is the right value. Okay, now let's uh, undo all of the bolts. Okay, so stuff is happening. The bottom uh, plate fell off and there's a lot of oil there. So let me grab a rag. As you can see, there's some oil dripping out. There is a torsion spring here, so this is probably trying to uh, pull the two parts apart. Okay, all the bolts are out. Now let's see what's going on here. So here is the base plate and then we have our torsion spring. 
this is what keeps the unit in initial position when there's no oil pressure. And here is the inside of the famous Venus unit. So right now the unit should be locked because there's the locking pin. Now I'm going to try and remove the locking pin. And there's a tiny spring that uh, presses down on the pin and that pin locks in the two parts. Now I'm going to try and remove the pin. So here is the pin. It doesn't look like there's any damage here. So I can't feel any grooves. This doesn't look too bad. The spring also looks okay. And now that the pin is out, I should be able to rotate the inner part. So here you can see that the part rotates. Here is uh, the back plate. And here is the sprocket. And here you can see the hole where the pin engages. So I'm going to clean everything and uh, then we're going to take a closer look at all the components. Everything is disassembled and nicely cleaned. So I've started inspecting all the components. And uh, the first thing I've noticed is that this uh, front plate is made out of aluminum. So it does wear a little bit. So this is where the veins of the Venus slide. And uh, you can see that there are a bit of uh, grooves here. I mean, uh, I can just about fill it with my fingernail, but it's not really that bad, I think. So I wouldn't call this a worn Venus just yet. Well, actually here on this vein, I can feel a little bit more. So here you can see that this side is a bit more worn out. So let's check this side. This one is not so bad. So basically this is the worst. But I don't think it's that bad. Okay, so this is uh, the front plate. And uh, this is the back plate. This is made out of uh, steel, so you don't see any very big grooves here, not uh, much going on here. So as you can see, steel on steel does work a bit better, as long as there's oil in between, so this is okay. 
Then you have the torsion spring. It's still in one piece. It's probably a little bit stretched, but uh, it should still be strong enough to keep the venous in initial position. Then we have the sprocket. Uh, there's not much to check here. Uh, I mean, you can see that there are some signs of wear, but it's not that bad, I think. And then you have the central rotor. Here you can see there is a little bit of uh, discoloration. But again, not too bad, I think. And then we also have the veins. So this is what uh, slides in the venous unit. They don't look worn, so I think they are just fine. And then you have the locking pin. The locking pin, once again, doesn't show any deep grooves or wear signs. I mean, there are a little bit of discoloration and uh, wear signs here, but I don't think it's too bad. So this is what locks the venous unit in place. Then we have this uh, spring. It still looks okay. It should have enough power to insert the locking pin. And uh, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. It's uh, quite a complicated unit. There's a lot of uh, things going on. It's definitely not designed to be uh, maintainable. Uh, you just have to replace the whole unit. It's really not worth just replacing single parts in here. So I would say that the most uh, common failure point is this plate here. So uh, the grooves here, the oil can go past the veins and that's probably what is causing the issues. Then you have uh, weak torsion springs and then I would also say locking pin being dirty or damaged. And also here where the locking pin engages with the rotor, you can see there is a little bit of wear. So on this edge here. So if this edge gets damaged, then the locking pin just won't slide in. So this is how the locking pin works. It slides here until it gets to initial position and then the spring presses the pin in and then the central part is locked. Now I'm going to try and explain how the venous unit works. So the venous unit is basically just adjusting the camshaft timing and based on the rev range or the power requirement that comes from calculating all the parameters, the ECU sends a signal to the venous solenoids and the venous solenoid can apply pressure into these chambers. And if the pressure is applied on this side, then the whole rotor wants to rotate in this direction. But when the pressure is applied in this chamber here, then the rotor wants to rotate in this direction. So this is how the venous is controlled. And if we take a look here, we're going to see there are some oil channels here. So this channel here goes to the center and this channel here on the other side goes to this hole in the outer ring of the venous unit. If you look here, you can see a small chamber and these small chambers all around help build up pressure. And uh, once that pressure is applied, then the oil fills the whole area and then the venous unit can regulate or rotate the camshaft. So this is how the rotation is regulated by applying oil pressure with the help of venous solenoids. Now, of course, 
there is also the locking pin. So here is where the locking pin is located. And the locking pin is also released with the help of oil pressure. So the oil pressure comes here in this chamber from the center. And then it fills through this cutout, this little small pre-chamber. So the oil pressure is created underneath the locking pin and the locking pin is then lifted up and then when it's high enough it unlocks and the venus can then rotate. As you can see it's quite complicated and uh, this is probably why these venus units are not very reliable. And uh, yeah, this is how the locking pin operates. I hope that uh, now you can better understand how the Venus unit looks like or how it operates. Now I'm going to try and reassemble the Venus unit and uh, put it back on the engine. And the Venus unit is back together. Now I'm going to torque all the bolts back to 10 Newton meters. And now it's finally time to put the Venus units back in the engine. Now I'm going to remove the chain tensioner and put in this pre-tensioning tool from the timing kit. This pretensioning tool has to be screwed in all the way. Then we insert the intake locking tool. If you need to, you can rotate the intake camshaft a little bit so it fits nicely on the locking tool. And then we also insert the exhaust camshaft locking tool. Now you might have to rotate the camshaft a little bit to get the tool in. Okay, the locking tool is in and uh, now I'm going to secure them with bolts from the timing kit. Okay, so the intake Venus unit is in and now I'm going to put in a fresh new Venus bolt. And I'm going to tighten it down just hand tight so that the Venus unit can still rotate a little bit. Now I'm going to put in the exhaust Venus unit. 
Okay, and another fresh new Venus bolt. Again, I'm going to make it just hand tight so it can still rotate a little bit. Now I'm going to install the front Vanos locking tool and I'm going to make sure that the impulse sending gear or wheels engage with the pins. And the tool has to be flush with the cylinder head. I already have the locking pin inserted through the flywheel, so I'm going to put a link up in the card or down in the description where you can check out how to insert that pin. It's quite tricky. It usually takes about uh, 10 or 15 minutes to get it in. But uh, yeah, anyway, check that video if you need to know how to do that. So the engine is now at top dead center position. And now we have to pre-tension the chain with the pre-tensioning tool that is already installed. The inner bolt in the pre-tensioning tool has to be tightened down to 0.6 Newton meters. And uh, usually you don't have 0.6 Newton meter torque wrench ready. So I've designed and 3D printed this little tool. This fits right onto that middle bolt in the pre-tensioning tool and it is calibrated to torque to 0.6 newton meters if you want to make one uh, i will put a link down in the description to the 3d model and uh, you can print it out and uh, calibrate it to 0.6 newton meters if you need to Okay, and now we have to torque the Venus bolts to 20 Newton meters. The Venus locking tools are in, the camshaft locking tools are in, we have the bolts torqued to 20 Newton meters and the chain is pretensioned to 0.6 Newton meters. So now we can do the final 180 degrees of rotation on the both Venus bolts. Now I'm going to mark the bolts. So I'm going to make a mark at 90 degrees and 180 on both bolts. So this will be just to verify that we did in fact torque the bolts to 180 degrees. Now I'm going to do my first 90 degrees. Now I'm going to do another 90 on the exhaust and another 90 on the intake. Now I'm going to remove all the locking tools and uh, also the pre-tensioning tool. And now I'm going to put back the tensioner. This is the new version, so the latest revision. It has a smaller hole, it is a bit longer and a bit stiffer and this bolt is a bit thinner here. So uh, easy way to recognize an old design is if this uh, bolt part is wider. It's uh, about one centimeter wide, while this one is about six. If you still have the original, definitely replace it. And then I'm going to torque the chain tensioner to 65 Newton meters. Sometimes it's easier to remove this hose
Okay, I've checked the timing by rotating the crankshaft uh, two times and then reinserting the locking pin through the flywheel. And then I was able to insert all the locking tools without any issues. So I think that the timing is perfect. I almost forgot to put back this bolt. This is the bolt on the upper slide rail. And uh, this is E8 Torx. And I'm also going to torque it down to 10 newton meters. Now I'm going to put back the valve cover. I am planning to remove this valve cover a couple of times in the future. So I'm not going to use any silicone. I will live with any oil leaks. But uh, if you are doing this on your car, make sure that you use a little bit of uh, liquid gasket maker or RTV or silicone on all the edges. So put a bit here, here, here and here. And also at the back, put a little bit of here and here and here and here on the edges basically. So this will prevent any oil leaks at the back and at the front. And uh, yeah, now it's time to put it back. Make sure that the gasket fits perfectly at the back. Just go around with your fingers and try and feel the rounded part. And uh, you should feel if it's kinked or not. I think that this looks nice. Now I'm going to start doing the bolts. Always go from the center out. And finally, I'm going to torque all the bolts to 10 newton meters. And then we put back the Valvetronic sensor flange gasket and the two bolts. They have to be torqued to 8 newton meters. Then we put back the wiring harness for the ignition coils. And then we have to put back the grounding nuts. They are 10 millimeter. Those two bolts have to be torqued down to 10 newton meters. Then we put back the ignition coils. And also we plug them in. Then we finally plug back the Valvetronic servo motor and the Valvetronic position sensor. And also don't forget to reconnect the CCV hose at the back. And now we should be ready to start the engine and see if our repair worked and also see what happens with the Venus unit that was disassembled and then reassembled. So yeah, it should be quite an interesting conclusion to this series. Okay, let's reconnect the battery and see what happens.
I'm back in my car and uh, so the engine runs, but I still want to first delete all the adaptations because the engine was running incorrectly. So the engine computer tried to compensate for the missing valve. And uh, so to get the correct picture of the situation, we must now delete the adaptations. So uh, I'm going to go into the menu for E46 and select my ECU. So N42 in my case. And now I will go to F6 menu. And then here I have adaptation values delete. I'm gonna go into this menu. And then you have uh, different options. Now I will delete all the adaptations. So F6 and all the adaptations were deleted. So we should be at the starting point now. And uh, now I'm going to go back and start the engine. And I'm going to let the engine warm up and also I'm going to let the engine ECU to relearn all the adaptations. So let's go back into our rough running menu, which is F5 and then F7. And let's see what's going on. And here is our first cylinder and as you can see the value is now much closer to zero so now we have negative value but before we have uh, plus 2.5 something like that so uh, yeah the problem is now fixed however if we take a look here at the cylinder number four we still have quite a high number here so if i disconnect the coil I get a number 20, which means if you get a number 20, that that cylinder doesn't work at all. So this is the positive number. So if we take a look at this value, 1.8, it means that uh, this is almost 10% of inefficiency. So uh, there's something going on here, I think. Now, uh, when I first started this uh, repair, I did notice that this value was high, but I was uh, thinking that maybe because the cylinders are connected in a way uh, that this first cylinder is uh, influencing the characteristics of the fourth cylinder. And that does not seem to be the case. So we have uh, good values on the cylinders one, two and three, but number four is uh, still problematic. I would still think that uh, the fix was successful. I also have my uh, inlet position here of the Venus and now it is below 120. So this is very good. This is the correct number here. So we did fix this and also the exhaust is about 55, which is also within spec. So uh, yeah, I think that uh, we have fixed our issue but there is still something going on on the cylinder number four. I'm going to make a separate video on that. So uh, yeah, subscribe if you have N42 engine because uh, apparently my engine has all the issues that are common on these engines. So yeah, there should be more content for you guys. I took the car out for a spirited drive and I've let it warm up and I'm happy to report I have no hesitation or rattles going on. So uh, this fix definitely worked. However, as you've seen in the IMPA menu, I still have an issue on cylinder number four. So this is something I will deal with in my next video. So uh, make sure you subscribe if you have N42 or N46 engine. The only thing left to do now is uh, put back the
covers and the cabin filter housing. If you need to see how to do that, you can check my other videos. Otherwise, it's just a reverse process of removal. So I'm going to call this video series done. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance. Thank you.